evening, fans and viewers. Welcome to the Malik Show. Another night, Tuesday night, February the 8th, if I'm not mistaken. I'm your host, Malik Shabazz Sullivan. How you doing? Well, fans and viewers, tonight is another exciting special guest tonight. But while, let me adjust this camera because it's kind of, okay, there we go. Tonight, fans and viewers, we have a new special guest, a new artist on the Malik Show tonight. And not only uh, she's here, but she is with us live via, and uh, we're going to introduce her. Uh, but before I introduce her, um, welcome to the show tonight. It's, it's going to be an exciting show, and fans and viewers, last night, um, you all have questioned me on how long the show will be. Well, the, sh the show will last until everything goes well. But tonight, I would like to welcome... Uh, our new guest to the Malik show, uh, this lady and I, we're good uh, friends. We met uh, through Facebook. She is a uh, good friend of Angeli Robinson, Redhead, which she will be on the Malik show on tomorrow night. But ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome to the Malik show none other than Miss Tanya Dallas Lewis. And she is live with us here on the Malik show. Hey everybody, it's just this Tanya Dallas Lewis. Malik, thank you so much for having me. Anytime. Welcome to the show. And uh, Miss Tanya, tonight's gonna be interesting. I thank you for saying yes. Uh, we have an interesting show and tonight is all about you, not about me. And we've got some uh, good questions for you. And not only that, uh, Miss Tanya Dallas Lewis has her two new singles or two singles she had we'll play one for the malik show entertainment break and then we're going to play one as the malik show closes out later on but and also for a special treat we want to hear her sing just a little bit we just want to hear it live in person so that's all tonight but before as before we get into, let's get into our show um first thing is hot topics. Um, Mark Zuckerberg, if I said his last name correctly, is in a Facebook stalker alert. That is for hot topics tonight. Uh, and also, um, Miss Tanya Dallas Lewis is our special guest. Her interview on the show. She's live through via Skype. You all can see her uh, face to face with me live. So all of that. But first, let's get to our question of the day where I ask you fans and viewers questions you give me the answers through Facebook or Twitter today's question of the day and this and also Miss Tanya this is for you the question of the day is for tonight the music trivia question what's Bruce Springsteen's nickname that all of us know him by is multiple choice is it a the legend B the boss or C the hero Again, the question of the day, what's Bruce Springsteen's nickname that we all know him by? A, the legend, B, the boss, or C, the hero? Miss Tanya, I'll go ahead and let you answer that question for us. It's the boss. Of, yeah. of, of course. Okay. None other. That's right. That You got it right, Will. You're our, our special guest winner tonight. So go ahead. You're getting pumped up. You're getting ready. But fans and viewers, um, like I said, if you're on Facebook, go to the Malik Show. Look it up. If you are a fan or if you're not, give us the answer. Or you can tweet us the answer at the Malik Show. So I thank Miss Tanya for that. And before we get into our extravaganza, our night, let's get into our hot topics right here on the Malik Show Live. Okay, now tonight, uh, this story was brought up to my attention on last night. Some of us, uh, most of us in the United States of America, all over the world, have Facebook. We all do. But uh, there is a, a matter of a life and death situation in this hot topic tonight. Um, this is uh, Mark Zuckerberg, the Caucasian guy right here. And this is an Iranian 
I'm going to uh, try and get his name out if the best way I can. Please forgive me if I made any mistakes. But let's get into hot topics tonight real fast. Mark Zuckerberg, I fear my Facebook stalker. Uh, Mark Zuck Zuckerberg claims he's been stalked by a man who's been spending, no, been sending him creepy messages through Facebook and threatening his safety. TMZ has reported that Mark has obtained a restraining order against 31-year-old Pradeep Man Manukanda. He's a, a Iranian, but as you can see, you know, he's going to have a funny name. But after Mark filed legal papers claiming this guy has tried to follow surveillance and contact Mr. Zuckerberg using language threatening his personal safety and the safety of his girlfriend and his sister, law enforcement sources tell us that Pradeep has gone to several Facebook offices and Palo Alto, California, attempting to contact Mark to ask for money for his financial uh, situations and to have his family killed. According to legal documents, Facebook owner and security also intercepted in this matter. On January the 24th, 2011, there was a court trial in the Los Angeles jurisdiction. Uh, the police has given a verbal warning to Pradeep, claiming to stay away from Mr. Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, he has contacted him through mail, and also this man has been sending flowers to his girlfriend. Uh, she has received that on January the 28th, 2011. Now, fans and viewers, you are not going to believe this, but this is what the Facebook message replies in. And this was this was the last message, the message, excuse me, before police, law enforcement and the courts got involved. Please help me. Then I am ready to die for you. He continues. Please understand my pain. The judge has ordered Pradeep to stay at least 30, 300 yards away from Mark, his sister, Randy and his girlfriend, Priscilla Chan, pending a hearing later this month in February 20. 11. I have the Facebook message actually right here. Everything that Pradeep has wrote to uh, Mark and Randy Zuckerberg. Now, um, let's get to Miss Tanya because I know she's kind of wondering what is going on. Uh, Miss Tanya, I want to get your opinion on this hot topic. I mean, it's strange. Everybody has Facebook, but you know, I two or three issues with Facebook that I've read about is people getting offended, people harming themselves, trying to commit suicide because of this and that. How, how do you feel about the topic and those last three things I just said? Well, I think it's a sign of time. Um, technology is a blessing, but it's like a curse at the same time. It's like a double-edged sword. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we, we have you know, access into our lives. I mean, even now, I'm, you know, here in my office at home, you know, whereas before, you know, if we were going to do an interview, I would have to come to your studio, et cetera, et cetera. So it's almost an invasion, if you would, of our, of our lives. I mean, we have it on our phones. Now it's even in cars, you know. Mm. I'm just like, wow. So I think it comes with the territory, and I'm so sorry for, for Mark um, and his girlfriend and sister, and I'm even a little appalled um, at the lack of Facebook etiquette that the stalker has, um, you know, used. I mean, come on now. Mm. I guess if you be a stalker, you're just going to be a stalker. And it doesn't matter, you know, what medium you use, whether it's Facebook or you're outside somebody's window. Oh, <laughs> I just, no. just, it, it, it's just like a big ball of dirty earwax because even the fact that you have a copy of, I guess his name is Pretty. Yes. His, his Facebook messages, you know, to them, wow, that means that, you know, people can have access to the private things that we wrote um, that were private and we weren't stalking anybody. So, Malik, man, it's ugly. And I think uh, we need to continue to be careful and not let our guards down, even on something that can be as wonderful as Facebook. Because as you know, you know, Facebook is responsible for re reuniting, um, you know, long lost parents, co cousins, relatives. But it's also responsible for a lot of affairs, you know, people, you know, re contacting or getting in contact with their old flames from like, you know, 20 years ago. So it's, wow, it's 
it's a sign of the times. Yes, it is. You know, everybody is saying that. Well, as we close out on this topic, I wish Mark Zuckerberg the best with him and his family. Um, fans and viewers, if you want more information on this hot topic, please go to TMZ.com. Uh, you can read about it on there, or you can go to the Malik Show fan page on Facebook, and that topic will be posted as a 12 a.m. Eastern Time tonight. And now... It's time, it's time, it's time. The moment everybody has been waiting for and wishing for, Miss Tanya Dallas Lewis. Fans and viewers, before we get into uh, with Miss Lewis tonight, I have a few things, a few interview questions as well, and plus I have a little short bio that she has sent to me, and we're going to talk. We're going to have an interesting show tonight. Um, for those of you that's tuning in, I thank you, and I hope you all enjoyed the uh, show on tonight. Um, now, before we start, I just want to read a little bit about Ms. Dallas Lewis, and we're going to get started in the show. Now, this angelic voice of Tanya Dallas Lewis will quickly agree that she is destined to sing, inspiring and uplifting her debut project entitled Miracles will take you into the inner courts of worship. Tan Tanya Dallas Lewis' voice has enabled her to travel some very special roads from amateur night at the Apollo to the most noticeable political gatherings in our nation's capital. Her singing has entertained, empowered, and inspired the daughter of the pastor who began singing in her father's church. Tanya has been, has been singing for a very, very long time. She has sang national anthem for Jesse Jackson and the mayor of D.C. And I think the mayor of D.C. was, um, I know it's not Adrian Fenty, so let's scratch that off. But uh, is it, uh, can you give us the mayor of D.C.'s name, if you can remember? <laughs> I think it was Fenty. Oh, well, my bad. <laughs> No, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. I remember. It was so long ago. Well, oh, man. Give well, me a moment. Okay. Well, we'll get back to that. Uh, she has uh, also, Miss Tanya has been around and shared the stage with a lot of gospel artists that we all know about, such as Donnie McClurkin, Vicki Winans, Mary Mary, Kenny Latmore, Richard Smallwood, and many, many more. She has appeared on three gospel CDs, and she has sung for the U.S. Army, BET, the Congressional, Congressional, the Black, Congressional Black Caucus. There we go. And the National Negro Council of Black Women. Recently, uh, Tanya was personally invited by Dr. Bobby Jones, one of my favorite people that I watch every Sunday before I hop on out of here to go to church. Um... Miss Tanya has also been on the One Love Cruise. And, you know, I always wanted to go on the cruise. We'll get onto that later. Uh, she was featured on Corey Condridge, known as Coco Brother, Played It or Faded, in which she prevailed. Uh, the angelic voice travels, spending the great news of Christ. Amen to that. Uh, wherever she goes, she has been nominated and received several awards. Her current video entitled Something About a Miracle is Rotation on BET Video Gospel. Tanya's current single Something About a Miracle and Faults are taking the gospel music industry by storm. And miss her successful career as an on-air reporter for the Ion, Ion Television Network. Tanya works in the music industry at her church as a worship leader, a youth choir director, and a youth leader. Tanya has a servant's heart and she is ready for the mission. When she, when you meet Tanya fans and viewers, if you know her personally or if you started to know her like I am, you may feel like you've been knowing her all your life. She's warm, loves to laugh, and get kicks out of going against the grain. She is a rebel at heart in a good way. Tanya is married to a Mr. Dale Lewis, and she has two young boys. She is a down-home girl who treasures family and relationships and loves to sing from her soul. Wow. 
that is a interesting bio that I just read. An interesting bio. But let's get into our interview questions tonight. Now, Miss Tanya, the first interview question I have to ask you tonight is what age? Well, first of all, can you tell us a little bit about your background? Like, where did you come from? And a little bit about your parents. Yes, I come from the planet Earth. And I'm just kidding. That's a joke. <laughs> or I could say, I come from my mom's belly. No, I'm from the D.C. area, and um, I'm, I'm a middle child. I have an older sister, and she's 11 months older than me. So we are twins for one month of the year, which is pretty cool with the same age. But anyway, yeah, I'm right here from the D.C. area. Pastor's daughter. I come from a family of um, great musicians, jazz musicians, um, pastors, preachers, teachers, you name it. The Dallases and the Horns have probably done it. So I'm just, um, I'm just me, I guess. And I love to see you. Yes. All right. Um, the second uh, interview question I want to ask, and is, and I was reading your bio, Amateur Night at the Apollo. When did you actually go to the Apollo, and um, how was that experience? Oh, my gosh. It was an amazing experience. That was back in high school. It seemed just like yesterday. And it was me, my sister, and my best friend, Kiki. And we had created um, a singing group. This is back when, you know, that barbershop harmony was, like, in again. Um, mm -hmm. So in both was on the scene, and voice men would soon follow them. So anyway, I, I heard in high school... Um, where we, you know, went to high school, we were called the, the Hernan High School Supreme. And uh, we sang pretty good, you know, a cappella, pretty, pretty good. So we went and we auditioned for the Apollo, and tons of people were there auditioning. We were so scared and so nervous. And uh, when we sang, uh, whatever song it was we sang, we didn't even get to finish. The, the, the auditioner, if you will, or the person, you know, doing the audition, cut us off. She didn't even let us get, like, to the chorus. Mm -hmm. And so so disappointed. We were like, man, we stunk that bad? But when we got outside and we were complaining about it, someone overheard us. And they were like, no, if she cut y'all off, that means y'all are good. If she let you keep going, that means that wow. y'all can't sing and she just needed to be sure that you can't sing. And sure enough, they were right. We um, made it into the finals. We went, we performed. We had a school bus, you know, full of our peers. Um, and my high school counselor, Miss Thelma Calvert, uh, organized all that. And we drove up to, you know, where it was taking place. And we won first place. And I'll never forget it. It was one of the, you know, one of the highlights of my life. Wow. That's, that's interesting. Um, yeah. The next question I want to ask you is... Um, and I ask all my special guests this, so don't don't you single out. How was your childhood? And what I mean by your childhood, did you now this also reflects in number one, but most of my special guests that came on here shared some, you know, things that they've been through, shared some things that they had to go through to get to where they are now. Now, Miss Tanya, have you been in any bad places of your life that you know you wish you never been but god just brought you you know through it and look at you now you know you're successful you're into the church thing and and you're known by a whole lot of legends and interesting people man you know i don't have you know one of those testimonies you know where i was on drugs and i got pregnant at 16 and all that other kind of stuff i know people typically say that pastor's daughters or pastor's kids are the worst kids, but I was one of the exceptions to the rule. I genuinely believe that my mom and dad had um, my best interest at heart. So when they told me, you know, that these are the things that we expect of you, these are the things that things that God asks of you, I did them. So I don't really, again, you know, I was, I was joking around with my manager, her and I were joking around because I don't really have a story to tell, you know, for the most part, I was a goody two-shoes, not because I was a saint, because I wasn't, I had my issues, um, my issues just weren't, you know, going to parties, and drinking, and clubbing, and being promiscuous, and disrespecting parents, you know, that was just not in my MO, I really was just a good girl, um, just, you know, some of my areas just weren't those type of, um, you know, the typical areas that pastors, kids, you know, you typically struggle with, like rebellion, etc., um, but certainly, I don't think anyone who lives on this earth could ever say that no rain has come into their lives. So I 
have those type of stories, um, you know, where God, you know, just again and again proves that he will, that he is who he says he is. And uh, that's why I still serve him today. He identified himself to me at an early age. I'm going to say like around four or five. So I didn't grow up, um, you know, in the Christian faith because my parents taught it to me, per se. I actually really had a relationship with him on my own. So when I did go to college, everybody was like, oh, girl, you're going to go buck wild. You know, you've been under your parents' rule and authority. You're going to go crazy. Uh, no, I didn't. I was the same way in college. Just, you know, chill, love to laugh, uh, try not to take myself too seriously, uh, but honor God in my actions and my choices and trying to be a person of integrity. So that's pretty much my story. I'm, I'm just like the girl next door and typically people who meet me, most of the time feel like they've known me forever. And um, I work with the youth, as you know, and I like them to know that not everybody is out there, you know, uh, having sex before marriage or, or, you know, smoking, you know, weed or whatever it is, you know, that you want to fill in the blank. Not everybody is doing that. There are plenty of people who are um, making some right choices, although they're difficult to make the right choices, but um, they are making some of the right choices most of the time. And uh, I think we should, you know, talk about those people a lot more so people can see a balance instead of just seeing, you know, people who are like, I was a crackhead and now, you know, God saved me. You know, mm-hmm. we don't all have that story. Well, you know, Miss Tanya, let's let's pause for a minute and let's, t- let's say something else related to church thing since you're, you know, you brought up in the church and stuff. Um, a lot of people today are against going to church and you know why i say that is because at young the young generation today they are um they're just against going to church i don't know why but how do you feel now you are a youth leader as it says in your bio and you said that you're a youth leader and all how do you feel that the youth today are just out there you know as far as these things that i'm going to name and i jot it down Having sex before marriage, smoking and drinking, same-sex marriage, gay and lesbian. Um, also, re- being rebellious to their parents. And um, the list goes down, but how do you feel today that our youth are slipping away and caught up with the world? Actually, I'm going to disagree with that just a little bit. I actually, you know, don't, you know, don't quote me. I can find it if, if you force me to. But I've actually heard reports that say that Generation Y is actually um, a lot more uh, religious, if you would, than Generation X. Um, a lot, a lot of kids um, or youth actually are going to church and actually are, you know, making, you know, some some pretty decent choices. Now, there's always going to be a group of young people who are rebellious. Um, it's a part of our nature to go through a time, especially in the teen years, where you're trying to, um, you know, navigate through the waters of adolescence and figure out who you are and your desire for freedom and recognition um, and, you know, resenting yes. authority. So typically, teen go through that, but I'm going to disagree with you. I'm going to say that a lot of our youth are, uh, for instance, I, I heard a report in a study that showed that uh, the generation Y uh, kids are more uh, uh, pro, pro, pro-life pro um, than the generation before them. So I think coming up, there are kids who are saying, man, you know, if this is the way the world is, it's not working, and maybe that there needs to be a change. But, you know, again, not to discount what you said, but I think you'd be surprised at the the statistics that show uh, that young people are going to church and that they are reaching out and they do recognize uh, the need for a savior. Yes, yes, indeed. Okay, well, I'm going to ask one more question and then we're going to get into the break. Um, It says that you, um, now let's just jot down this and I want to hear this from you. You say that you have shared the stage with artists Donnie McClurkin. Vicky Winans, Mary Mary, Richard Smallwood, and many more. Can you please name at least some more, if you can remember, and how do you feel being on a stage with artists, you know, big time, I say, but still, you know, they're all gospel, they all been through stuff. How do you feel being on the same stage with them? And please feel free to name some others that you shared the stage with. Oh, sure. I've had the... Um opportunity and honor to share the stage with uh, Marvin Sapp, uh, Fred Hammond, 
um, Dottie Peebles, uh, Vicki Yogi, Martha Minuzzi, uh, Ty Tribbett, James Fortune. I mean, I could just keep going down the list of yes. gospel greats. Kenton Jones is another one that's, you know, on the rise and doing his thing. Um, it's amazing. It's, it's like a dream come true. Um, the Bible says that your gift will make room for you. And that's, that's you know, what has happened with me. And I'm so grateful. Um, I look up to these people. You know, they are my peers. And a lot of them, um, you know, musically, where they are in ministry, is where I, I, I hope, I know, no, let's change that. Not hope I will be, but that's where I one day uh, shall be to, hear, you know, to help carry on the torch. Um, I recently had an experience with Miss... Uh, well, not Miss, Pastor Shirley Caesar. Yeah. <laughs> Doing a cruise, and she was, you know, one of the uh, gospel artists, and I had the opportunity to sing in front of her and a, and a whole, you know, mass of people, but she was in the front row, which made me very nervous because I'm very shy. <laughs> I talk a lot, you know, I'm on TV, you know, I, I hope, you know, I've hosted, you know, television and produced television, you know, programs for about 12 years, but I really am shy. So anyway, she came in the audience um, with her entourage and a whole lot of people with her, and I was like, oh, Lord, I got to sing in front of Miss Shirley Caesar. No, Lord, no. Hmm. But uh, it went down awesome, and after, you know, my set was over, she had the next set, and she came on stage, so she should have been singing, but she came on stage, and she pulled me aside, and I'll never forget what she said. She said, daughter, you have a gift. She said, you can go all the way, and I just, you know, had tears in my eyes. I mean, this is a living legend, okay? She is a gospel music icon in her own right. Um, the first lady of gospel, and she's speaking life into me. I don't, I'm not even sure if she's aware of how much uh, life she spoke into me and confirmation. So, yeah, just amazing to just, you know, be surrounded with and working with uh, some gospel greats. Um, and a lot of them are so down to earth. It's just amazing people. It's just, it's a dream come true. Yes, I know indeed. that's cliche, and people say that all the time. It drives me crazy. You know, how does it feel? Oh, it's unreal. It's a dream come true. It's like, can y'all think of anything else to say? But there really aren't any words to kind of sum it up really shortly. Otherwise, we'd be talking all day long about how does it feel. So the easiest way to say it is it's really a dream come true. It's an honor, and it's a privilege, and I don't take it lightly at all. Yes, indeed. Well, fans and viewers, at this time, we're going to take a break. We're going to listen to one of Tanya's um, singles, and then we have uh, more, uh, a few more interview questions, and then we're going to actually hear Miss Tanya sing tonight. Not a whole lot, but just a little something. But at this time, let's uh, get, let's, let me cruise on up here. And um, like I said, we're going to listen to one of her singles. When we return, we will have more with Tanya Dallas Lewis. Don't go nowhere. Invite your friends. The Malik Show is still live. Here is the Malik Show's entertainment break, Miss Tanya Dallas Lewis.
flow. I feel like Kirk when he told him to stone me. I got swag, check, but pride, check. Why you think we kneel down and pray? Uh, I'm from the gutter, of course. It's a church on every corner, man. You should come around my way. For sure. Look, we all sin, man. Even the ushers. Ain't nobody here better than Usher. Got grace, come look at my two step. If God is a DJ, Christ is a customer. Little homie, you've been bought with a price. This I feel when the cross in your life. You know how that old saying go right. If I'm wrong, I don't wanna be right. The sunshine, that's a part of his love. Walked in the church like, can I get a hug? Used to be dirty, man, now I'm so clean. Walk in true religion, I ain't talking no jeans. got some pipes i'm That's glad right. you sent me that song i'm gonna put it on my ipod tonight wow That's i right. was i was just grooving out you know i you know that that's that's i like that that's ladies and gentlemen that was tanya dallas lewis faults we all have our faults but you know like i said that that song was something else but i'll be sure to say that on my i'll be i might blast it uh all night till i go to sleep <laughs> I'm talking about you do that, Malik. Yes, indeed. <laughs> ah, yes. Okay. Well, fans and viewers, that was uh, the Malik Show's break, Faults, and we're going to listen to the other song when we close out tonight. So that's still to come. Miss Tanya's going to sing for us a little, so that's also still to come. So don't you go anywhere. But uh, we have a few more interview questions, and we're going to try and be out by 11. But like I said, though, we ain't going to keep nobody. Um, as it says in Miss Tanya's. Um, uh biography she has went on the one love gospel cruise and let me tell you i'd be listening to yolanda adams every morning back then in 2009 2008 and all she would talk about don't forget to purchase your tickets for the one love gospel cruise but miss tanya was one of the people that was there so miss tanya i want you to tell our fans and viewers your experience and what did you do on the one love gospel cruise and how were you blessed by it Oh, man, I had a fantastic time. Um, truly, memories I will never forget. Went in 2009 as a new artist. Came back in 2010 as a new artist. And we're going back again this year in 2011 as a rising star. So wow. I'm excited about um, just all the opportunities that God has given me. I had a, a, you know, a chance to meet some of gospel's finest and greatest uh, when it comes to the gospel music industry. And then, you know what? The people on the cruise, the rag, you know, I'm talking about the regular people. They were the highlight as well. These were people from all walks of life, um, Christians. You know, I don't care if they were Pentecostal, Baptist, whatever. We all came together to really unite in that one love of Christ. And uh, just the whole cruise is catered to Christian folk. So uh, last year, uh, yeah, last year, 2010, uh, I had the... Uh, uh, just honor of um, Jerry Smith, that uh, who you know is in charge of you know talent and booking talent things like that. He aired my music video, something about a miracle, which is in heavy rotation right now on BET mm -hmm. throughout the entire ship. And so here I am in one of the lounges, um, and a couple tables away might be you know Donnie McClurkin or you know uh, Fred Hammond, you know just different people. And up on the big screen TV in the lounge comes my music video. I was like, oh my, I was so embarrassed. I was like, oh, Lord, look at my big old head, you know, but uh, uh, it was just a blessing.
blessing to be able to share my gifts and talents uh, with the people on the Radio One Love Cruise. And I'm really looking forward to doing it again this year, really, especially now that my full project entitled Miracles is out and it's available on CD Baby, Amazon.com, uh, TLMusicNews.com, and it's doing so well. It keeps selling out on CD Baby, uh, which is amazing. So we're yes. looking at. Uh, getting some local distribution, and, uh, you know, just even on iTunes. The song, my single, Foss, is doing so well. Right now, on the radio charts, I'm in the, uh, you know, low 60s. So I'm approaching the 50s on the official gospel uh, billboard chart. So I'm, I'm believing God for the top 10. Look, I believe God for number one. He can do it. So yes, I'm indeed. All right. Well, um, Miss Tanya, you, you, we have the faith that you will, no doubt about it. Now, the next question I want to talk about is Bobby Jones, Dr. Bobby Jones, the ambassador, from what he said on Sunday on Coco Brother. How, tell us how, of all people, did you get on the Bobby Jones gospel, your experience on it, and how was he? You know, we want to hear from somebody that is, you know, knows him because people, you know, say that he's a, a man of God. He's been doing it for God knows how long and he's a true down to earth person. So now we want to hear from you. Yeah, Dr. Bobby Jones is really nice. Uh, when you meet him, you probably feel like you know him forever as well. Um, you know, I haven't done the Bobby Jones show yet. That's Valentine's Day. That's this Monday. I'll be in Nashville to do that. Um, but he invited me on the show back in 2009. Mm -hmm. So, you know, God's timing is best. So that will happen, um, again, uh, this Monday, February the 14th, Valentine's Day. Uh, so I will see him again. Um, and it'll be a whole lot of fun. He really is as nice as everybody said he is. That, that's true. That's very true. All right. Well, our next... Uh, interview question for Miss Tanya is we all have loves we all have boyfriends girlfriends marriages and all but Miss Tanya let's talk a little bit about your marriage with Mr. Dale Lewis how long you guys been married and uh, your children and how you know you guys met just share a little bit with us and then we're going to hear you sing we're going to prepare to close out Sure. Well, we met, oh gosh, 14 years ago. We've been married 12 years. And even though we've been married 12 years, it really only feels like we've been married about five years. Mm -hmm. um, I was a, a television major at George Mason University right here in the DMV. And uh, my cameraman at the time, I was the campus reporter at George Mason at this time, um, we, we were doing our project in you know, our television production class. And in his you know, mini film was Dale. And I was like, that guy is so cute. Now, you have to keep in mind, the university I went to is predominantly white. So everybody in this class starts busting out laughing, you know, because I'm like, I'm digging this black guy that's on screen. And um, I guess my cameraman thought I was kind of ugly because he would never tell me any information about Dale. You know, I said it was cute. So you would think he would be like, oh, by the way, Tanya, do you want his phone number? Nothing. Or do you want me to tell him about you? I asked him and asked him about Dale. He would never tell me anything about him. So anyway, fast forward maybe three or four years. No, three years. Senior year, I'm about to graduate. And um, it had gotten around on campus that Tanya uh, was a virgin and that she was waiting till marriage. So you can imagine that I didn't have a lot of uh, guys lined up to date me. I didn't. So I was just preparing myself to just be a nun, I guess. I was like, okay, Lord, I guess I'm going to be single for the rest of my life because mm. I'm trying to do things your way. Mm. But... That's when my friend, my cameraman, said to me, hey, do you want to meet Dale? He's like, I think he would probably wait for you. I was like, you do? <laughs> and so I met him, and he was so sweet. He, he, could, he could speak proper English, and he was, you know, you know, well-mannered and handsome as all get out. I thought he was handsome when I first saw him anyway. He was totally my type. And so we went out on a date, and it was just wonderful. And so we fell in love, and two years later, we got married. So now we have two little chocolate, handsome boys, and um, he's my baby. Now, I'm not going to lie. I'll be, I'll be real. You know, trying to be um, a wife, um, a mother, oh, working full time and doing the recording, you know, the gospel music industry, that is tough stuff. Yes. And so you know, we have to work all the time to keep that balance in our marriage so that we don't neglect each other. The wife is the heart of the home. And, you know, when the heartbeat is gone, you can tell. And so I'm always trying to, you know, maintain that balance of, you know, I can't always say yes to everything, even though I want to, because, you know, I'm married now. And 
Um, my husband and my children need me. So, you know, every marriage, um, well, God's idea for marriage has always been one man and one woman together for a lifetime. Yes. And so that's our goal. We want to be married for a lifetime. I, I want to grow old with this man. And so I really am doing my best to balance as much as I can so that I can keep him first and keep home first. It's not easy. I don't always do a good job, hmm. but I'm working on it and trying and praying and, you yes. know. Just well, doing you the know, best. I, you know, Miss Tanya, this one thing I'm going to say, I'm going to leave it at that. A lot of marriages do end up because it's not enough going on, whether it is affairs or whether it is, you know, the love or the intimacy is not there anymore. I've, you know, I've even talked to people on Skype, um, people that I don't even know, because, you know, also what I do on the Malik show is have sessions. I started mm -hmm. doing this in November, and I, uh, like I said, though, I, they don't, you know, this, these are people that watch the Malik show every night or watch it when they have a chance and they mm -hmm. and they call and all that stuff but make a long story short uh marriages today they do crash they go on forever but um I'm glad for you to you know say that everything you know you met them everything is going well 14 years is a long time and two children involved so you know that's good that's real good well Fans and viewers, at this time, it is 1043 at the hour. What I'm going to do is we're going to see the preview for tomorrow's show. I'm going to get that out the way. And then we are going to close out with Miss Tanya with her beautiful voice and singing. And then we are going to say Sari Nada. So let's see the preview for tomorrow's show. And we'll take it, take it from there. For the Malik show on tomorrow night, the famous redhead returns. Miss Angelia Robinson returns back to the Malik show on tomorrow night to see how she's doing. Now, um, going back to Miss Tanya Dallas Lewis, fans and viewers, if you all do not know, Miss Tanya and Miss Robinson are good friends. We're gonna let Miss Tanya share a little bit of that, and then Miss Tanya will have her closing remarks and her little solo, sermonic solo, as I say. <laughs> so, Miss Ty, how, like I said, though, we're going to, let's talk about you, Miss Robinson. How did you guys meet? And I know you guys are the good friends right now, the best of friends, good friends. You know, share a, a little bit with us on that. Sure. Angela is a dear friend of mine. You know, she's a fellow artist. We have a lot in common. Um, we're both middle children and both. Um, you know, just like to laugh and have a great time. We met actually on MySpace. You know, I, I came upon her profile and I, I loved her style, her red hair. You know, she was so different and I thought, you know, that was kind of refreshing, you know, because everybody was just trying to be like somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I went on to the Radio One Love Cruise in 2009 and I saw her, she came up to me and she was like, are you Tanya Dallas Lewis? And I was like, are you Angela Robinson? And then the rest was history. You know, we stayed in contact. And then next thing you know, 2010, we were roommates uh, as we uh, were featured again on the Radio One Love Cruise, both of us singing this time, you know, her doing her thing and me doing mine. And, uh, you know, our families get along great. Our husbands get along great. So she's doing her thing. She's a hard worker. And yes. she's got are her own so i'm rooting for her well, i'm very know, happy for her well you know speaking of her husband uh derrick robinson was a guest of mine last year as well and we and like oh. i said though i have both of the both 
of the Robinsons on the Malik show. And I'm looking forward to having him back this year as well. But tomorrow night is Ms. Robinson's turn. So I'm looking forward to that. But that's good to, you know, be with people and greet with people. And, you know, because today the world is just different and stuff. But, hey, you know, it is what it is. But. Miss Tanya, Dallas Lewis, at this time, we're going to let you have your shout outs and your final and closing remarks. And then, if you would, um, there is a song that I would love to hear you sing. And um, this song, I know you can sing. Um, uh, I hope it. You better hope I know it. <laughs> <laughs> well, this song is Yolanda Adams. And and you know you guys do have a celebrity future. We talked we we had that on Facebook, but um in the midst of it all, you know, we all go through stuff. But when I hear that song sung by it it don't have it could be from the Pope. That song really feels down into my spirit because we all been in the midst of something, but God just brings us right back and keeps us moving. So I will let you have your spot now, final and closing remarks. And to sing a little bit of that song, and that's going to be in the, the end of our show tonight. Okay, and you know, <laughs> I love Yolanda Adams. I grew up listening to her. I have a lot of her CDs. I don't know that song that well. I mean, I, I know it. Like, if it, was, if it was playing, I could sing it, so I'll try. Well, any, i tell you what, any Yolanda Adams song that you know, um, go ahead and sing it. Maybe, okay. you know, you know. But I'll go ahead and let you have the final and closing remarks, and then we'll get to the sure, scene. Sure, sure. Well, first and foremost, of course, I want to thank Willie for inviting me on his show. He's doing some big things, and I wish you, you know, the best of luck, you know, as you continue to polish your show and, and uh, you know, get it out there and, you know, be a, rec yes. you know, a force to be reckoned with. Congratulations thank on you. all that you're doing, and I'm, I'm humbled to be a part of it. Um, of yes. course, you know, I've got to give shout-outs to my hubby. He is... Um, he makes my heart beat. <laughs> uh, to my kids, um, all my family, those people who are there and the, standing in the gap for me. I appreciate them so much. And, of course, to radio, the terrestrial and Internet radio. They've shown some mad love for Tiny Dallas Lewis. And because of them, I'm just about in the 50s on all the three major charts. I'm believing God for the 20s, even the 10s. Hey, even number one, he can do it. So I want to just, you know send out thank yous to everybody who is rooting for me and supporting me and believing in me. That just, Malik, you have no idea. I mean, it's really hard out there. Yes, it for is. A in my position and, you know, all the support, even the little things, those matter so much. So. Yes. Yes, yeah. indeed. But the song that I'm thinking of is um, called Even Me. It's by Yolanda Adams. Was that one of the more popular ones? Have you heard of that one? It's just based on the hymn. Ask Me Not, Oh Gentle Savior. Oh, that's one of my favorite songs, too. But you feel free to sing any song you want because I know that you're going to tear it up. And this is going to be one show that everybody is going to be looking at and that will be seen. And also, fans and viewers, this will be on YouTube. So you can, the whole world will be seeing it. Feel free to post it, share it. And at this time, we're going to have Miss Tanya sing for us. And then we are going to end our show with uh, her song, Something About a Miracle. And that'll be the end of our show Malik, tonight. That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> uh, well, we, that's, that song is going to be played. <laughs> we have the MP3. That, that song, I know the song, my song will play, but my kids are asleep in the next room, so I can't, I have a really big mouth. Well, uh -oh. Let's see what, what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm full of the fear of God. All right, let's see. Let me get my key. Me, me, Lord, I hear the shouts of blessing Thou art showering through and free. Shouts the thirst is so old, refreshing. 
loud, but I'm trying to be quiet. <laughs> You know what? If we was in church, I'd be top take off running. Because <laughs> I, oh man, I'm known for that in my church. I, if I hear a solo, I just take off running. <laughs> oh, man. But Miss Tanya, I thank you so much for being on the show. And like I said, though, me and you going to uh, talk about that little business, Um, you know, uh, before we go and close. But fans and viewers, Fans and viewers, fans and viewers, I thank you all for tuning in and watching the show tonight. I am truly blessed. God is good. And I believe, like Miss Tanya said, the Malik show will go forth and so on if I hook up with the right people. But it's, it's all God. But what a show. What a show. So, Miss Tanya, I thank you for being our guest tonight. You are now... <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, Malik. Yes. Again, you are speak to you. Now, so thank anytime. You. you are now part of the Malik Show family. So we will we will be keeping in touch. And you will, like I said, Miss Tanya, we'll be back soon. Real, you know, soon, like April, May, or June. Just to, you know, all that. But fans, oh, and may, you, I plug, may I plug my talk show that I have? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, just sure. FYI, I'm also doing radio, so I have a new show. It's a, a music, a gospel music show called The Music Box. And it comes on every Thursday at 7 p.m. on Blog Talk Radio. It's also syndicated right now, so it's being re-aired re on the uh, Excel Broadcast Network and soon to be on WOGS 103.9 FM. So I'm really excited. So thank you, Malik, for the opportunity to share that. Anytime. Fans and viewers, uh, we're now closing. Uh, here is, um, as we leave, listen to Tanya's uh, Something About a Miracle right now. Then we're going to go ahead and close. But fans and viewers, I thank you all for watching. Tune in for the Malik Show tomorrow night. Angela Robinson returns. I am your host, Malik Shabazz Sullivan, along with Tanya Dallas Lewis. Thank you all for watching. Be true. Be you. God bless you. Every day.